moved on to GM Dossi. So here our need is perhaps we see a lot of side effects. So the question here, this surgical colleague is asking me why not give me a GM Dossi. Amit, what would you be your opinion? He needs an adjuvant, everyone agrees. He's very reluctant to take a BCG. So he's reading up and he says, why, not, why don't you give me a GM Dossi? Uh, so there's data about GM Dossi intravenous yes. cycle, clearly. Uh, maybe for patients who just can't take BCG for any reason, I think it is a reasonable thing to offer. Yeah, so a lot of novel therapies have come off which perhaps GEM Dossi is available with us. And there are papers which have shown BCG, this GEM Dossi is useful in BCG naive patients also, as well as as the standard of a BCG relapsing or a BCG unresponsive patients. So uh, we have data key, we, we can give BCG, uh, instead of BCG, GEM Dossi. And obviously there are uh, advantages as put up this in this slide. If the oncological efficacy is similar, toxicity is definitely much less with GEM Dossi. Discontinuation rates are less. Can, you can give it immediately, don't have to wait for two weeks. Perhaps more, uh, takes a longer time to administer because it takes about three hours for the total installation. Availability, yes, little more costly. But again, the side effects are much less. So perhaps this might turn and change into a, the practice. Yes, Ashwin, you want to say something? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Ravi, sir. Yeah, Ravi, sorry. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I just wanted to make a comment, sir. Uh, regarding BCG inavailability, few cities in India experiencing uh, a lack of uh, BCG yes. supply, one thing. Uh, second thing is, if given an option, would anyone upfront go for gem dosi in this that, situation? That is the question. That uh, is what exactly I'm asking. Uh, even if they're willing for BCG and gem dosi, is uh, is it okay that we upfront go for gem dosi keeping so, so the, the? So there is a there is a data on that also. That's what my question is. Should intravascular gem dosi replace BCG? Should it be done for all patients, or that is for BCG naive, or should it be done only if they are not tolerating or relapsing or post BCG failures? Uday. If you say, uh, um, you must have, everyone realized that for last, I think, uh, one year or something, I am use, uh, use this BCG, but there are patients, a lot of getting side effects actually. Even in some patient, in my patient, they have got the small capacity bladder because yes. of BCG. Yes, yes. So that may be because of new strain or whatever, I don't know. So, uh, so you get one patient in your practice and you will think of changing. Yeah, he, so he keeps on coming back to you again and again. A lot and of patients. It's a burden on you. It's yeah. a psychological burden. Yeah. So, so you always think of that. Yes. And there are very well established terms. Uh, there, as I mentioned, there was a good paper by Gagan and his team from TMH. So they have highlighted the problems with BCG, especially with the newer strain, the Moscow strain, yes, yes. in last five, six years. Earlier, we were using Danish 1331. That time, the so many issues were not there. So in, in last one year, I have seen a lot of patients uh, having so, intolerance. So have, you, have so you changed to GEM Dossi primarily? Yeah, so I started that protocol in our institute to start with the GEM Dossi instead of giving the uh, BCG. So okay. Some patients are still on that. So some yeah. patients, so yeah. this patient was demanding that. So he received six weekly GEM Dossi cycles, tolerated well, was on a maintenance monthly GEM Dossi for the last seven months. He's developed symmetry again, was re-evaluated. This time he got an MP MRI done. There was a single tumor, two centimeters on the left lateral wall, virus two, TURBT was done, there were significant obturator jerks, and this was again PT1G3, but muscle was not present. Now what do we advise him now, Dr. Conetti? Can I make a comment also? Yes. Uh, we cannot forget the use of mitomycin. I mean, there's a lot of old data from yes. thin bladder tiles, so let's not just throw that no, away. It is agree. useful, even for the first set. And also, because he had large volume high-grade T1, I hope somebody talked to him about cystectomy as being a viable alternative also, so, even up front. So, so if we are this situation bad, now. Yeah. So now I would say he, is, he needs his bladder out. He needs because bladder in seven out. months, he's, despite therapy, he's had recurrence. So and it's same. Not, in, not insisting for, again, BCG. He has never received a BCG. So maybe I tried convincing him, why don't you take a BCG? It is still effective. We'll try to reduce your dose. We'll try to see how it can, but he's still reluctant. So early cystectomy was also discussed with him. Uh, sir, I wanted the uh, house Ravi. opinion that the uh, biopsy, because of obturator jerk or any reason, the muzzle was not included. Uh, would we want to go back, uh, look for the muzzle, see if it is involving, if does it make any difference in the approach? I, I decided not to go back because I had an MPMRI which was showing a virus too. So I took my decision, it's not a muscle invasion. And 
Either way, still an early cystectomy, even if it was offered, he's still reluctant for an early cystectomy. So what options do we have now? So we all understand cystectomy is the standard and the preferred option with its obvious advantages of better staging, trying to avoid the nodal disease and simplifying the follow-up regimen. But how about a radiation therapy? So uh, on muscle invasive disease, I'm putting up a little controversial topic. He's, this gentleman is reading up a lot. He says there are papers, sir. Your talk, your take, Dr. Malik. Uh, for this patient, he is young, 57, yes. and uh, uh, there is a recurrent disease after BCG or dose gem dose 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 in eight dose months. Dose. Yes. So probably for this case, uh, cystectomy is the preferred option. But uh, definitely, uh, uh, if patient doesn't want to go for cystectomy, there is option for. Uh, radiotherapy, radical radiotherapy with similar oncological outcomes. Is there, is there, do we have a long-term data on that? Uh, we Are the radiation therapy techniques any different? Uh, we have data for radiotherapy, but the, these are not randomized. Fewer, uh, da few data of radiotherapy yes. are evolving with uh, immunotherapy as well, with or without immunotherapy. We'll and come to that, but for a radiation therapy. That for radiotherapy, yes. yes. Radiotherapy along, along with, with combination along with, therapy. Along with uh, Avelumab and do comparing with BCG. Yeah, thank you. Vedang, your opinion for a... Sir, this is the best uh, systematic review. There was a, this a, was a review. It is a uh, uh, amalgamation of almost 700 patients, yes. I think. And what is the risk? Why is uh, NMIBC high risk risky for patients? How is it life-threatening? If you think about it, it is possibly Tons undetected muscle Distant invasion, metal. undetected nodes. So what radiotherapy is reasonably good at is to treat this muscle invasive component uh, and treat the nodes in about 15% of the patients. Do you agree with this concept? I think it's a good concept for, because many patients don't want a cystectomy. Yeah, majority many don't patients want. cannot majority have a don't cystectomy. Want, yes. My only two concerns... This patient sir, is not wanting. Two issues. Post-BCG, cystitis can make it radiotherapy very painful for everybody. Yeah, this is, I think I would this, avoid. This is not... BC. Second okay. is the expectation after radiotherapy is that the muscle invasive is gone, they will still keep getting non-muscle invasive, maybe recurrences. papillary recurrences, that radiotherapy will not probably avoid. Okay, yes. fine. So there, are, there is a move to explore the role for radiation therapy in a primary non-muscle invasive bladder cancer. There are a couple of papers, and so this was a recent article published which says pushing the envelope, should we look, and there are three trials, prospective trials are already in progress. The preferred trial, which looks at radiation with concurrent avalumab. There's a durvalumab with BCG or durvalumab with concurrent radiation. And there's another phase three, phase two study, which is looking at radiation therapy with concovalent tislizumab. We will have some mature data in a couple of years. So uh, there is a benefit, but you need a standardization of the dose. What is given currently is as per what we give for MIBCs. Chemosensitization has shown to improve the results of uh, radiation therapy, and we are awaiting results from good randomized trials. Radiation. So, coming to Amit, oh, how about a systemic immuno-oncology therapy? This patient is very keen. I want my yeah. bladder to be preserved. So, 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 uh, if he's reading a lot, then definitely he's reading a the lot. data is right there. Uh, so, we have the keynote studies with the pembrolizumab yes. as uh, as a therapy for trying to preserve the bladder for BCG refractory disease, and they have yes. defined BCG refractoriness in the, uh, in the both. Yes. The, so we did see the cohort A and the cohort B, we saw both the data sets. But Mark, you, you can clearly see what you saw at three months. We had 40% response rate. Yes. At one year, it went down to 20%. Down. And that's my worry, you know. As time so goes by, you will go down to 10%. And then, then is it really worth it? So this is one setting where I would so really obviously not obviously, you would discuss in detail with yes. the patient and explain yes. Yes. What it's shown, we do not have a long-term data on this. It and looks very promising in the early phase. No, but the data is definitely showing a decline in the response decline rate. Decline so in the response rate. It may rates. end up that he will end up with a cystectomy or some, just maybe a year or two later. So it's a little so, setting where we may not use it. So coming to the question to Dr. Connetti, do we really have a long-term follow-up with all these so-called rescue therapies or so-called novel therapies? Cystectomy remains as a standard and preferred. And do we have all these? We need to tell this patient, which I have already told, but he needs to understand that again. What's your opinion? 
Well, the other one that you didn't discuss was nadopharogen yes, pyridinovic. Right? Yes. That's the other FDA approved yes, uh, yes. this thing. Has very similar parameters as uh, uh, Keytruda or, uh, and the Kino257 yes. trial. The, the advantage is it is actually, at, we have now data we're going to present uh, for 36 months. And the response is a little bit better than uh, the 20% that you're getting with uh, uh, what you so saw. The question in is, are we just delaying the cystectomy in him? Correct. You probably are delaying the cystectomy. But yeah. in, if he's one of those lucky 20, 30%, you know, the, F, the FDA panel said if you have a durable response of over 30%, then that's a viable drug. And these many of these meet that. Yeah, I, I, I think in such patient, we need to be very clear cut in our discussion and counseling what is good, what is the long term results. Obviously, cystectomy still remains. Yep. The, so the take-home message would be cystectomy with diversion gives best results with its inherent morbidity and mortality. Search for alternative options is on and many promising are there on the novel on the horizon. We will come to know in a few years. So this, this is the second case. This was a 76-year-old male who was evaluated for irritative LUTs and hematuria. Ultrasound, a CT was done followed by an cystoscopy, TURBT and an EUA. These are the images. He also got an FDG PET CT done. There's a large, if you could watch here, there's an FDG with tumors involving most of the dome with some peri extravasical extension. The biopsy was a high grade TCC, both lamina propria and muscle was involved. This is another picture. And his main complaint was severe irritative symptoms. Dr. Ravi, what would be the treatment options. Uh, considering that he is 76 year old gentleman, yes. and uh, if his performance status is good. Performance status is fairly good. Uh, no I comorbidities. Would, I would go for a neoadjuvant uh, chemo followed by radical cystectomy. Yeah. Anybody would consider chemo and radiation therapy as a preserving the bladder? Amit. Uh, this decision actually is, I think, more of a discussion because patients who, yes. are, who clearly he, refuse and say, we're not going to end up with cystectomy with whatever the situation. He's not refusing here. Here he's saying, so my question is, he has a lot of irritative symptoms. The bladder capacity doesn't appear to be very good. Right. Would you still offer him a chemo radiation even if he agrees? No, I don't think so. I think we'd still prefer the other approach. You'd prefer a surgery. Dr. Connetti? Yeah, I agree. Given all the other symptoms he has, yes. that may be the best thing. And one could argue, do you, you know, even the question of, uh, I, I don't know the other parameters, creatinine, et cetera. Creatinine so normal. It's all normal. normal. So no other comorbidities. Then he may be a good candidate for neoadjuvant. But sometimes some of the older patients, if they have some other issues, hearing impaired, et cetera, then we probably just go straight to a cystectomy as well. So this patient received four cycles of gemsis, tolerated very well, and there was almost complete response on the PET CT. Again, discussion was done, and now he's refusing a cystectomy. He says, I've got such a good response. These days, people read the PET CT reports. There is a complete response on FD. But I've not put up the images. And he's choosing a radiation. Was it the right decision, Dr. Malik? Uh, this patient probably not uh, that suitable for chemo radiotherapy. But uh, definitely, it's patient choice. And uh, if there is no residual disease, and patient doesn't want cystectomy in that case, if yes, we can offer for radiotherapy. So primarily, which patients would you choose for a chemo uh, radiation? Usually the patients uh, with uh, without having any hydronephrosis, not having any nodal yes. disease. And uh, where about the bulk the of the tumor? Does uh, the yes. bulk of the tumor, yes. the bladder capacity make you change yeah, the yeah. decision? Yeah, yeah. So uh, when we can do our uh, good TURBT, maximal TURBT and uh, bladder capacity is Here good. it was not possible. Huh. But in this case... It so my choice was a cystectomy. He is declining. Dr. Connett, you wanted to... Yeah, one other option is to do nothing. You know, there's actually a randomized trial going on right now, but there's actually good, strong retrospective data, single or multiple institutions, showing that that is an option for some patients. I myself have also done that. <coughs> And in some cases where the bulky tumor reduces but doesn't go away, you can even consider a partial cystectomy if the patient doesn't want to. Okay, do. So fine. doing nothing is also an option in observing. Uday, you want to say something? Yeah, I just want to add that uh, if you want to chemo radiotherapy, the renal function should be uh, good, actually. Yeah, Otherwise, function. you won't be able to so he had, the chemo. He had, he had a good so, renal function, and yeah. he has tolerated a new adjunct also very well. So as I mentioned, which patients are not suitable if they are not having a good renal function, small capacity. Uh, we also know the optimal radiation delivery techniques. So coming ahead, 
He comes back eight months post surgery and now again has an hematuria with occasional clots. This is a two weeks duration. He was evaluated, but there's no recurrent disease now. Cytology negative, mild dilatation of the upper tracts. So what should be the working diagnosis now? We have ruled out a recurrent disease. This is Rabbi. post RT. Sir. This is post chemo RT. He went on to chemo RT despite I telling him for a cystectomy decline. Uh, we have done a CT. Uh, Everything. No recurrent disease, cytology negative. CT has also been done. Would want to do a cystoscopy, sir. Yeah, but what's, what's your working diagnosis? Uh, working diagnosis would be at this point of time uh, either a recurrence, which we have reasonably ruled out with imaging. The second one is radiation induced. Uh, yeah. Hemorrhagic so, cystitis. So the working diagnosis you're right was the radiation induced hemorrhagic cystitis. These were the pictures. So the question is how do you manage him now? What's your protocol for managing radiation induced hemorrhagic cystitis? So the one precaution which I would take while doing a cystoscopy when I'm ha when I'm having a, a radiation induced cystitis back in my mind is that I wouldn't over distend the bladder yes. to begin with. I would keep the flow rate low. The moment we over distend, it's going to ooze from everywhere yes. and the uh, whole purpose is defeated. So I would keep the lower flow rate at minimum, uh, not over distend the bladder. And if there are any obvious uh, uh, bleeding points or telangiectic vessels, I would want to go fulgurate them as much as possible. Diathermy or laser, anything, any particular preference here? Uh, Does it make a difference? Uh, I'm comfortable with uh, diathermy. Diathermy, okay. So you need to look for the severity of the symptoms, bladder storage symptoms, whether there are any associated clots. So conservative measures like antibiotics, antispasmodics might help, alpha blockers you may need to give. And as you mentioned rightly, cystodiathermy fulguration will work in milder cases. Any role of sodium pentosone sulfate? Dr. Malik, do you give it as a prophylaxis? I have seen a practice, some of the radiation oncologists give it as a prophylaxis when they're undergoing a... No. Usually, don't we give as a prophylaxis. No role as a prophylaxis. Okay, any role now with radi established radiation induced? Here, we can use, uh, we can uh, uh, consider for giving hyperbaric oxygen therapy in this case. About sodium pentosan sulfate? We'll come back to that later. Yeah. Yes. Would you use sodium pentosan?